What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how I built this reclaimed modern shoe rack slash bench for my sister's birthday. She chose the design and color and I just put my personal touches on it. The first thing I do with every furniture build is start with the SketchUp design, or in this case four of them. After talking to my sister about which one she liked best, I used that design, but I redid the dimensions to optimize the lumber I already had on hand. I used half a 2x10 and half a 2x6, and about 30 inches of 1x10 that I had left over from my shelf build. So in total, the lumber only cost me about $10. And guys, yes, cans of stain and polycrylic cost money, but I see that as a bit of an investment. One can of stain or finish can easily last many projects. I put three coats of polyacrylic on the shelf I was just talking about. It totaled about 140 square feet, and that was only a third of the can. Once I was done the design and happy with it, I could do up my cut list and head out to the garage. The first thing I do is cut all my lumber down to its proper length. Then I run it all through the table saw after. This allows me to be operating only one saw at a time. And shorter pieces are much safer to run through a job site table saw by yourself. So I cut the 2x6s down to 30 inches each, making sure they were the exact same length. I then cut the 2x10, two pieces at a length of 16 and a half inches. Those will become the legs. And one piece at 25 inches, that'll become the bottom shelf. The last cuts I had to make on the miter saw were to the 1x10s. I needed those two pieces to make up the smaller shelves on the inside. I cut one at 13 and a half inches and the other at 16 and a quarter. With that done, I was able to put away the miter saw and pull out the table saw. I ripped the 2x10s down to 9 inches, which took off one of the rounded edges. Then I set the fence up to 8 and 3 quarters and took the other rounded edge off. The 1x10 didn't come with rounded edges, but I still had to rip it down to 8 and 3 quarter inches to make the shelves all the same depth. I'd like to talk a little bit about safety here. I keep my saw blade only a quarter inch above the height of the wood I'm cutting. That way, if I ever accidentally put a finger over the blade, it only cuts about a quarter inch deep. And guys, that actually happened about a month before I started this YouTube channel. I wish I had a guard for the saw blade, but I bought this saw used and this is how it came. When using a table saw, you ought to be focused on cutting the wood and nothing else. It's too easy to lose focus and then lose a finger. I'll go way more into safety in a future video. With everything cut, it was time to glue, screw, and dowel this thing together. I wanted a one and a half inch space between the floor and the bottom shelf. So I set the shelf on top of some scrap 2x4s, which made it super easy to screw in the legs, ensuring everything was square and level. I always take a bit of extra time to wipe up the glue squeeze out right after I've attached two pieces of wood together. This makes life down the road a lot easier. I didn't want to use screws for the one inch wide shelves, so I decided to use quarter inch dowels. I have a dowel kit I picked up from Lowe's for $40, and this made it a breeze. It comes with a jig that ensures your bits are square to the surface you're drilling into. It also comes with bits and stop collars. The most useful thing is these little metal points. You basically drill into one piece of lumber, put the metal points in those holes and then line it up where you would attach it to the other piece of lumber and push. It leaves small holes spaced exactly where you need to drill for your second set of holes. Then you just need to make sure the point of the drill bit is in that small hole when you start drilling. It's super easy and super simple. Guys, this is not a sponsored video. I only have four subscribers, no one's sponsoring me. I'm just letting you know that this is a tool I use all the time and I think it's worth its weight in gold. It saved me a ton of time and headaches. I usually wait 2-3 hours for the glue to dry before I unclamp and start sanding. As you guys may or may not be aware, I'm not a fan of sanding and how long it takes. But since this was a gift for someone else, I took the time to make sure I sanded every inch of this bench properly. I first used a belt sander and some 80 grit to flatten out the top. Then I went back with a belt sander and used 120 grit to smooth it out a little bit. I got some roundover bits specifically for this project. I started with a 1 8 roundover bit and then realized that didn't really do much. So I stepped up to a quarter inch roundover bit. This gave me a nice, smooth, consistent round edge. 
I figured it would be better to not have a sharp 90 degree corner digging into your leg while you're trying to tie your shoes. I then grabbed my random orbit sander and ran through the usual 80, 120, and 220 grit sandpaper. As you can tell by the lack of daylight when I finish, this process takes time, but it's worth doing right, especially if it's for someone else. To give the best some color, I'm using Verathane's Aged Wood Accelerator. I've been trying to tame this stuff and I finally got it dialed in. Almost looks like you're putting water on your project, and then it kind of slowly turns gray over an hour. I brush it onto one side at a time, making sure I got a thick, even coat. If it looks like the wood is dried up, I put on a little bit more in that specific spot to make sure that it's evenly and consistently coated. This is the best way I've found to get it to not show any brush marks or blotchy spots. I decided to put the top on after the stain but before the polycrylic. The way I did this gives the bench a really unique look. I used two inch screws to attach the top. No big deal, right? But I pre-drilled the holes so the screws would sit below the surface. Still no big deal, right? Well, I went out and purchased some 3 8 oak dowel plugs. I pre-drilled the holes that the screws sit in with my 3 8 drill bit from my dowel kit. I applied a tiny amount of wood glue to the dowel plugs and then put them in the holes. It makes it look like I use dowels. The oak is also a nice shade of brown that accents the gray wood. Then I was able to do three coats of polycrylic sanding with 220 between each coat, and then sanding with 600 grit once completed to give it that smooth feel. It was kind of a pain to sand everything down, but again, this was for someone else, so I needed to make it as perfect as I could. The last thing to do was add the feet. I used some light duty vinyl pads that I picked up at Lowe's. They don't stay on by themselves very well, so I added a dab of super glue to attach them. I've had a few issues with these feet coming off, but only because they're meant to be stationary. So if the project's meant to be moved or slid across the floor, I think felt pads would do a lot better. And with that, the bench is done. I love how this bench turned out. I love the oak dowels. I think it's a really nice touch. They really showcase all the attention to detail that went into this project. I also love that some of the lines from the initial 80 grit belt sand on the top stayed. I think this gives it a, a little bit of a rustic and unique look. If you've ever seen furniture that's made straight from the sawmill, it usually has a similar texture and look to this. The color looks really good too. It looks more brown on camera in the house, and that's just due to the lack of light and the way the camera's set up. It looks like I literally took some old cedar barn boards and made a bench, and I think that's pretty awesome. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps out a young channel like mine as it's getting started. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. All the notifications go to my phone, so I answer them pretty quickly. Thanks for watching. He's waiting for me at the door. He doesn't realize the garage door is open. What you do?